Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we look at adding repeated OBX values into a CSV file. And not just OBX, any other repeated value that you want to get into a CSV, this tutorial will show you how to do it. So for example, let's have a look at some of the messages that come with HR7 soup. And we can see here that we've got selection of fields highlighted. These are the ones that I want to get put into a CSV file. So we've got the patient's ID, their first name, their last name. And then also we want to get into all the result values out of the OBXs. And so we can see here, there is this number. And so we want the OBX fives from each of these OBXs. And you can see there's actually a number of OBX values here. And we want to get all those values and we want to put that into a CSV file that we can either load in another application or load into Excel and take a look at that there. What's different about this than most transformations, instead of transforming one HR7 message into one CSV record, we're actually taking one HR7 message and we're converting it into multiple rows of CSV. Effectively, we're creating a single file of CSV that's going to have multiple rows depending on each of the OBX values. So how do we do that? I'll start by loading up Integration Host. And if you haven't already seen the introduction videos to Integration Host, I suggest that you do take a look at those at the end of this tutorial. I'm going to assume you already know a thing or two about it. I'm just going to click New and Begin. So we've got a couple of options here, common ways of receiving an HR7 message for this type of thing. Often it could be as a file, we could use the directory scanner and actually scan for the directory. I've done that already in another tutorial, so I think in this one we're going to get a TCP receiver instead. Call the workflow a nice name first. It's going to be called Add Repeat Values to CSV. And I'm going to receive on port 22222. And then, as always, we're going to add in a default message template. I'll just use one of the sample messages. I want to use this one, which has an OBX segment in it. And then we want to send that off to a file. So I'm going to add another activity in. And I'm going to set this one as a file writer. And I'm going to call it write CSV. And I'm going to give it a file name. Paste that in there. And we're going to call it file.csv and I want to make sure it's unique for each HR7 message that comes in so I'm going to drag in the message control ID and place that into the file name and that will append the control ID to each file so they'll be uniquely labeled and we're going to you'd expect me to choose CSV as the type because we're doing multiple messages into the one we're actually better off choosing text and the reason is, is we're going to construct the entire message in one go. CSV would actually hinder us because it would be trying to enforce that single record policy. So I'm just going to remove the text that's there in the message. And because it's not CSV, we can provide the header manually. So I'm just going to type that in. We're going to have an ID, first name, last name, and value. And so the ID, first name, and last name, they'll be the same for every single record. It's the value that we're going to have change per OBX values. So this is just a simple example to show you the principles involved. Right, so that's the headers in place. Let's construct the lines. And so we're going to head into the transformers. And the first thing that we're going to do is bring in those fields that we need and put them in as variables. And we're going to select the patient's ID. And I'm just going to drag that into the transformers list. And notice that automatically creates the patient ID as a variable. We'll do the same for the family name of the patient, given name of the patient. And the other field we wanted, that was in the OBX. That was going to be the OBX5. We want the observation value. Okay. So now I'm going to add in a for each because we want to loop over every single OBX value. And I just drag that OBX value. And because of that, we are going to want to put this OBX value inside the for each. And that's because all the other values are only needed to be set once. Only the observation value is actually going to repeat. And so now we've got to write out the line. So if we do that, I'm just going to select the transformers and add an append line. And into that, all we have to do is build up our line of text that represents the CSV. So probably the easiest way to do that is change the source of this to point to our variables. And notice it lists all the variables that we just created. 
And so I can drag those and drop them into the source path of our appended text. So this is the patient ID, and comma, patient's first name, comma, family name, comma, and the observation value. And you can see now we've constructed a line with the comma separated value separating all those variables. It's going to repeat for each of the four reaches and write the file out. But that all makes good sense. About the only thing to add to that is you may want to format some of those values. So the options are to sort of click on your, your family name and we can make sure that the casing of that is always correct. So I can just go format text and names. I'm going to give it the McName casing. Obviously, if you had any dates and you were going to Excel, you're going to want to convert that to your local date format so it'll show correctly in Excel rather than the HL7 date format. And also, probably quite critically, if you've got commas that appear inside any of your values, they would corrupt this text by adding an additional comma in. Changes to the structure of the message, you don't want that to happen. I happen to know in the sample values, we do actually have that a comma in one of our observation values. So all I have to do is right click on that observation value variable, select to encode it, and I'm just going to encode it for CSV. And what that will do, it'll look at the contents of that value, and if there's a comma inside it, it's going to put it inside of quotes, which is the CSV format. It'll make sure that comma is treated as text and not a structure in the CSV format. And so with that, workflow is completed. So I'm going to save and close that, head back. You can see it's already running. So I'm just going to use the sample messages in HR7 soup to try this out. Click on this one. So we can see it's got a number of rows of OBXs. So that should be good. So I'm just going to send that through. We use the same port 22222. So I'm just going to click send. Here's our response. If I go across to the integrations here, this is HR7 soup view of the integration host. It's the same thing as going to integration host. And we can see it's worked. And I can refresh the logs. And we can see the values coming in, and indeed that it seems to have written out correctly. And if we have a look in the file system, indeed the CSV is being created. Let's take a look and see how it went. I'm going to open it up into Excel, and we can see that indeed it has loaded and it's populated all the fields. We do have a little bit of a problem here. I notice some of those fields still have the carrots in them. That's because the OBX 5.1 did have components in it. So let's go back and we'll edit that workflow to fix it. And I'll do that from the integrations tab, load up that workflow pattern again, hit transformers, and select the observation value, and I'll just make that choose the 5.1 value instead. That way, if there are components in there, we'll only get the first item of the OBX5. Save and close that. And let's try again with the other message now. Choose this one, and I'll hit send. Again, we've got success. I'll head over to the file system, and here's our next file created. Note that the file name has been given a unique name, as we designed. And I'll load that, and here it is loaded up into Excel. Again, you'll see it's all laid out correctly. I will quickly just jump across to Integration Host. I just want to quickly show you inside the logs, and we refresh the logs, and we look at that first item, and where it wrote it out. So we now have selected the right activity. And you'll notice this line here, it has a comma in it. That was the comma inside the actual text. And you'll notice it's put quotes around that particular row. It's done it the same thing here as well. And that's what encoding for CSV did for us with a simple right click option. As always, if these videos have helped you, why not consider returning the favor? Give us a like. Subscribe to our video feed on YouTube. We've got constant videos coming out all the time that'll help make you an HL7 expert. And we'd love to hear any feedback that you've got for us or suggestions for future videos.